Uh, let me see if I'm in the right place. Yeah, tonight in chapter number 11, I want to begin reading here, and, and this, again, this a lot of this is uh, self-explanatory, and, and we have a, a study here of two witnesses that are going to come back to earth, and uh, there's been, have you all thought about that this last week, as I, as I mentioned, I guess uh, last Wednesday night, have you thought about who these two witnesses are uh, that are going to come back? Now, they're extraordinary men. Uh, but the Bible, I believe, is very clear in who these two witnesses are, even though it's not exactly said here in the Scripture. I believe by comparing Scripture with Scripture, we can know who these uh, two witnesses are that are going to come and, and uh, are going to witness again to the Jews. Chapter number 11, verse number 1, uh, this scene begins with John having some, some things to do on his own. Uh, up until here, he has been watching and he has been listening but now the Holy One of Heaven, God Almighty, tells him to do something. And uh, he tells him, And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. Uh, but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Now he is telling to, to measure uh, the temple. He said um, uh, measure the temple of God. Now there is a temple of God in heaven. And I believe that. I believe um, you know, there has been temples on this earth that have risen and been torn down. Uh, and and uh, several, you know, several temples have been built and been, uh, been torn down. But listen, I believe there is a temple in heaven because God said to John, John measure the temple, but leave out the outer court. The temple, friend, is where, uh, you know, uh, where the Jews worshipped. And that's where they went to worship, went, went to offer sacrifice. And he's telling John here to measure because the, uh, you know, because the temple is going to be rebuilt during the tribulation period. The temple in Jerusalem is going to be built. And guess where it's going to be built at? At the sacred place, the holy place, where the temple uh, is supposed to be is at the Rock of Omar, uh, where the dome of the mosque is. And so when you see that picture of that great golden mosque there uh, in Jerusalem, when you see that, you look and know that there one day is going to be the, uh, the third temple that's going, to be, you know, that's going to be resurrected by the Jews. It's going to be built back by the Jews. The cornerstones, and I've told you this before, the cornerstones have been cut. The, the uh, furniture has been made. The table of showbread and the golden uh, laver, all of that has been made. I've seen it, looked at it with my own eyes there in Jerusalem in the museum. And they've got all these things ready to resume temple worship. And that's, what, that's why John is measuring because he's, uh, you know, is, is telling us that that temple will be rebuilt and the Jews will resume sacrificial worship as they did uh, years ago. Now, we go on and see verse number 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days closed in sackcloth. Now, they're closed in sackcloth because, they, you know, many times you'd see in the Bible uh, where, well, Jonah, he put on, or the people of Nineveh put on sackcloth. They put on sackcloth because of mourning, because of repentance. And you find several times in Scripture where people put on uh, sackcloth because of their uh, mourning, because of, of uh, you know, a, a terrible situation that they were in. Well, here these two witnesses are dressed in sackcloth. And they're going, to, they're going to prophesy. He says, I'm going to give them power to, to, to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days closed in uh, sackcloth. Now, what are they going to do? They're going to be preaching the message to the Jews for uh, three and a half years. You measure that out, it's three and a half years. And they're going to pr be preaching to the Jews uh, for three and a half years during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to be preaching. And, and the things that these men are going to be able to do are supernatural. It has to be ability. It has to be gifts and abilities given to them by God or they can never do this. And until their time comes, and we're, I'm getting ahead of myself, but until their time do, uh, comes, 
no man can touch them. No man can harm them. So let's read about these two witnesses uh, here. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing uh, before the God of the earth. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So these men will breathe if someone taunts them while they're preaching. If someone comes and throws rocks at them or tries to disrupt their preaching of, uh, to the Jews, if they start doing that, the, their very breath will be breath of fire that will, that will consume humans. You say, I'm preaching, that's a, that's a lot. I, well, what, what does the Bible say? If you agree with the Bible, then you must agree that, you know, and I've had people tell me, well, now that, that's going to be, they're going to have uh, uh, flamethrowers. They're going to have things that, that uh, you know, that's what the Bible said. But listen, if I do that, if I say that's what's going to happen, that's belittling the Word of God. But if I take it for what it's saying, out of their uh, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Uh, instant cremation. So, friend, uh, no one wants to stand before those two witnesses in the day in mockery uh, because they will, be, they will be breathed upon by these two men because fire proceedeth out of their mouth and they will devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So if anybody tries to hurt him, somebody comes up and, and uh, you know, somebody comes up and threatens with a sword, they just breathe on them and the, the fire from their mouth will consume them. And I believe that. Why do I believe that? Because the Word of God teaches that. The Word of God tells us that. And uh, many people try to spiritualize a lot of things in, in the book of Revelation. Many people try to get it on terms where uh, we could possibly understand that how things that man has created could, could do the things that these people are, uh, or that the Word of God tells us that these two men will do. But I take it for nothing except what the Word of God says. Uh, these two men will breathe fire. And, and, and their breath of fire will kill them. These have the... Now listen, here's where we get who we believe that these two men are, okay? Uh, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Now, who was able to shut heaven that it not rain for three and a half years? Elijah. So, now, the two... The, and I, what, I'm, what I'm preaching tonight goes against thinking of some men but it goes along with the thinking of some other men what I am preaching but a lot of what, what the two witnesses I'm about to tell you tonight that I believe it is uh, goes against the teachings of two men but against the preachings of a lot of men because they not, probably I don't know 75% of people that teach this or preach this will tell you that this is Enoch and, or Enoch and Elisha because those were the two men uh, that, ha that did not see death. And they go off the scripture uh, that is, you know, that is uh, over in Hebrews that says it is appointed to man once to die, but after this the judgment. Now we take that as, as being what it is. It is appointed to man once to die, but after this the judgment. Now there is a time of death appointed, I believe, for everybody in here. It's going to come your dime one day. But if the rapture takes place tomorrow, that's an appointment that I'm going to miss. And so I look at that, that's the way I look at that verse of Scripture. Uh, I'm not going to die. Physically, I'm not going to die if the rapture takes place. But as, as mankind exists, if you live long enough, there is going to be a time of death for you. So I, I agree with the, the part about Elijah because I believe this first witness to be Elijah because he was able to call fire down from heaven uh, and, and he was also able to uh, um, let it not rain. So... That was his prophecy, and that's what happened. And listen, they have power over waters to turn them into blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, who is this? Who did that on earth? Moses. So I, that's who I believe the two prophets to the two prophets to be, the two witnesses to be, is Moses and Elijah, because we know what Moses did when he was down in Egypt. He turned the water into blood. And, uh, you know, he caused plagues, or, or by the word of God, by what God told him to do, he caused plagues to, uh, uh, to smite the earth. And, the, you know, you read about those plagues, they were terrible things. Well, here's going to be a time, these last three and a half years, is going to be a time when it's not going to rain on earth for three and a half years. 
the rivers and the waters are going to be turned to blood, which we've already, already studied part of that. And it's going to be a horrible time. And these men are going to preach uh, there, and they're going to preach in the last days of time. And then here's what's going to happen to them. And when they shall have finished their testimony, when, when, the, when their work is done, they have finished their testimony, they're going to be destroyed. Now, friend, I also take out of this that man has time upon this earth to do a work for God. I've got time on this earth to do a work for God. You've got time on this earth to do a work for God. And unless by some foolishness we shorten our days because of, uh, you know, of some foolishness in our life and, and uh, you know, uh, God's got a, got a job for us to do and a time for us to do it until we leave this world. Now, God's called me to preach. I believe that with all my heart. Been doing it you know, quite a long time. And I enjoy it. And, and I want to preach till, till my last breath is gone from me. I was talking to a fellow the other day about retiring. I may one day, hopefully, if we live that long, when I'm 90 years old, I might get to retire from public work. Uh, probably going to be that long way things are going, but I'll probably have to work forever. But I'll tell you something. If I could retire at, at uh, 65 years old, like a lot of people get to do, if I could retire, and Lord, let me do retire from public work at that, I am never have any intentions of retiring from the work of God. Because God called me, and his calling was out repentance, and I believe that God's called me to a work uh, to do till he comes back or he takes me out of here. And that's the way it is with, with believers. God has something for you to do, and we can never retire from what God's got us, got us doing. And, and a lot of people, you know, they get saved, and they work, work in the church, or they do something for years, and then they just want to sit back and, and listen. God, if God's got you doing something, which he has every one of you doing something, living for the Lord, serving the Lord, doing the will of God, uh, whatever he's got you doing, be faithful to it, until that great retirement day comes when he calls us out of here or, or when he takes us, when we meet our appointment with death, whatever it is, be faithful to the Lord until he comes and there's great reward for you. God's retirement plan in heaven will far exceed, far exceed anything that I could gain down here on earth and retire at. Amen. And, and all that is perishable anyway. But the retirement plan that God's got for me for all eternity far outweighs anything that I could gain down here on this earth. So that when these two prophets, when they came back and when they were prophesying, these two witnesses prophesied and were pro they, they did it till their time was up. Here's what it says. And when they, <coughs> excuse me, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, <clears throat> shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So there's coming a time when their work's going to be finished and they're going to be allowed to be killed. You say, now, how do you explain all that when, you know, when they're coming from heaven and, and uh, Moses has died and God, God attended his funeral, by the way, and Elijah hasn't died, but is, is Moses going to have to die? I'm just reading to you what the Word of God says and telling you, I don't understand all that, but I believe it's going to be just the way it's said. And that, and that, that uh, pit of hell is going to be opened up, and they're going to, out of the bottomless pit, uh, they, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So they're going to be killed. And they're not going to be killed and buried as... As uh, most people are, they're going to be left laying in the streets of Jerusalem. And they're going to be left laying there where uh, all people can come by and look at them. And there's going to be great joy over their death. Uh, there's going to be great exuberance over their death because they have killed the prophet of God. And that's what, they're, that's what people are going to think. We've killed the prophet of God and the Antichrist and, uh, you know, is going to proclaim, you know, we've killed the prophet of God. But listen what happens now. Uh, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom. Spiritually now. See, here's an instance where it is called spiritually. So here we take it as for what I said. Spiritually it is called Sodom. And Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And he was crucified. This is talking about 
uh, talking about Jerusalem where the Lord was crucified. And then he went down to Egypt, remember? He went down to Egypt uh, and, and spent some time down there. So here, here it is. This is a, a, a spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Now, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations, all the people of kindreds, tongues, and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their bodies to be put in the grave. Leave them out there in the hot blistering sun because we know that the sun is magnified and we know that the, uh, there's no rain and we know that it's going to be a terrible, terrible time. And they're going to leave them out there for three and a half days in the sun. And they're going, the Bible says, And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. So, they're, I mean, it's going to be a, a make, making merry day when these two prophets are killed. It says they're going to give gifts to each other. They're going to be happy that the two prophets are killed, these two witnesses are killed. And listen what happens now. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. Oh, my. Three and a half days later, friend, God himself, amen, God, the God of all heaven, he moves upon them, and the spirit of life from God entered into them, and after they've watched them, and after they've been trampled underfoot, and no telling what, how their bodies have been mutilated, uh, while they have lain there, three and a half days later, the Spirit of God enters them, and they stand up and they walk. Now that brings a, a whole new meaning, you know, to, to these two witnesses. Because uh, they stand upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Three and a half days, these two, these two witnesses, uh, Elijah and Moses, after three and a half days, their bodies are resurrected. The Spirit of God comes upon them, and all men stand in amazement when the, when the, the, when the Bible says, it says, come up hither, and they are, they are, in a sense, raptured out of here, those two selves, to be back in the presence of the Lord. Now, friend, all of this is going to, is going to be done, and, I, and all this is going to be seen, but yet people are still not going to go and believe that there's a God in heaven. Uh, verse number 13, I'm, I, I think I'm going to read the rest of this and stop because there's uh, quite a bit left in here, so I'll probably just read the rest of this, and we'll stop here tonight with verse number 12, but I'll read the rest of the chapter to you. And this, Well, it's hard, kind of hard to do, but I'm going to try. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, now, when God does something great, sometimes, many times, great earthquakes are, are, uh, ac do accompany that. And the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake were, in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. The remnant, that's who gave glory. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe, woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of the world are come, are become the king, kingdoms of the world and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat about God on the throne, on the on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants and prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hell. Oh, my. All God's doings and all God's blessings are happening and are unfolding that's going to take place in the tribulation. All the things that are going to happen while we're in heaven are unfolding right before our very eyes. It's an amazing thing, friend. The Word of God is an amazing book. And, and it is there for our enjoyment. It is there for our learning. It is there for our knowledge. And it's there that we can tell others, look, if you don't get saved, if you don't get right with the Lord, if you don't repent of your sins and turn to God, these things are going to happen to you. 
And my friend today, it ought to give us a burden for lost people that they might come to know the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Again, bless it, I pray. Lord, help us, Father, as we continue on in our study of this great book, God, this revealing, this revelation. Lord, I of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, you'd help us to rightly divide and keep in our hearts and minds that, Father, these things will shortly come to pass. And God, help us to be faithful till you come for us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless